For this video, I've made a binary counter, which is this circuit here. Let's have a quick look at it. I've got a monostable based on a 555, which produces about a one second pulse, a reset button. My first D type flip flop is this one here and this LED. My second D type flip flop is the top edge here and this LED. And as you should know, D type flip flop is triggered when we have a rising edge into the clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the button and see why we call this a counter. So I'm going to press the button once and what you can see is that my first LED has come on so that means I've counted a total of one. So I'm going to label that LED as the number one. And if I press the button again this will be the second press. So now I've got two. So now this LED has come on so this is the LED which represents the number two, label it number two. And if I press the button again, that will be the third time, which of course is made up of two plus one. So that represents the number three in binary. And if I press it again, that will be the fourth time. And I can't represent four with just two LEDs, so it goes off. Let's have a look at the timing diagram to see what that would look like. So here I have drawn my monostable clock pulses. I've got one rising edge, two rising edge, three rising edge, four rising edges. And that is my clock, the yellow button. I'm going to first of all draw the output Q, which represents this LED here. So I'll label it Q1. So on the first rising edge, Q1 was originally zero, it now goes up and becomes logic one. And it stays there until the next rising edge. On the next rising edge, Q1 goes off. And it stays off until the next rising edge when it comes back on again. And when I press the button again to get the final rising edge, it goes off again. So you can see that Q1 is half the frequency of the clock. This is a frequency divider circuit. Let's also add to our timing diagram some more information. Let's add Q1 bar, which if you notice, if I move this out of the way, is connected to the data. So it's also data. Now Q1 bar is always the opposite of Q1. So it's originally on, it goes off, it goes on, it goes off, it goes on, like that. Now, as our final part of our timing diagram, let's draw Q2. Now, Q2 is this output here, which represents the second LED. Now, if we follow the circuit round, you'll see that the Q bar output of the first counter is connected through this green wire to the clock of the second counter. So the clock of the second counter is the Q bar, this blue line here, which has a rising edge just here and a rising edge just here. So that means that we know a D-type flip-flop only changes state when the rising edge of the clock. So it's originally zero, it changes state here, and it changes state here on this rising edge and this rising edge. Now, if I look at my binary, in this situation here, I have them both off. So this is binary zero. After one clock, I have a one and a zero. So that's binary one. After this clock, I have a zero and a one. So that's binary two. After this clock, I have a one and a one. So that's binary three. And after this clock, I go back to two zeros. What I've done here is I've expanded my circuit. I've added two more D-type flip-flops on, this one here and this one here, with their associated LEDs for four and eight, so that I can demonstrate counting in binary. So here we go. I so far have zero counts, so I have one, two, two and one is three, four on its own, which is what we didn't have last time, 
4 and 1 is 5, 4 and 2 is 6, 4 and 2 and 1 is 7, which is the max we can count to with 3 bits. But I have a fourth bit here, so pressing again, 8 on its own, 8 and 1 is 9, 8 and 2 is 10, 8 and 2 and 1 is 11, 8 and 4 is 12, it's getting quite stressful now, 8 and 4 and 1 is 13, 8 and 4 and 2 is 14, 8 and 4 and 2 and 1 is 15, which is the maximum you can count with 4 bits, 0 to 15, 16 states, 2 to the power 4. Pressing again will take us on to the 16th count, which would need an LED over here, and all these go off. Finally, you'll notice I've now added on my diagram a line running to all of the resets on the counters, which is this blue button here, and the blue wiring across the board. It's interesting to note that it took me longer to build this circuit than it's taken me to make the video, which is a bit mad. Let's see what the reset button does. So I'll just count to binary 5, and if I press the reset button, it goes back to 0, as you would expect. But you can do many more powerful things than this. Let's have a look. So here we have a bit of live circuit rebuilding. I'm going to take out this reset wire, I'm going to move my two, take out the set wire, connect my reset to ground instead, just like that, annoyingly looping over the green wire but can't be helped, connect my set to the reset line, like that. Annotate my diagram. This has now become the set. This now can't be called reset, so let's call it load. And what happens here is if I count up to, say, my binary 5, like I had before, when I press the load button now, it's going to reset this counter, this counter, and this counter, but it's going to set this counter so I will actually load the number 1. And there I have. I've loaded the number 1 into my counter. If I go to binary 6, like that, then what happens is when I load, I load back to 1. So now instead of counting from 0, I'm counting from 1. So let's have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and back to 1. And it should be fairly obvious that it, by connecting these as sets instead of resets, I could actually load any value I wanted. So I could make a counter that counted from 7 to 9 if I wanted to.